Hi, I'm Jane Devosevic. I'm here with Doug Mariani from Spread the Health Show. And today we're going to bring in my husband, Joe Devosevic, and talk about how to recover after the holidays when you've totally overindulged. Doug, have you overindulged well, over the holidays? Here, here's, you know, <laughs> I, I love the, the subject today because I, I am an overindulger for sure. Okay. Um, what I found myself in, you know, I went over on the Spread the Health show going into the holiday. Because I've been eating pretty healthy, you know, the last few years, I actually, I mean, there are certain things that my family makes, you know, we've gone over, I'm full-blooded Italian, I live to eat, not love to eat, I live to eat. Right. You know, and my family, we make some great food, some great desserts, some things like that. You know, each holiday, there are certain desserts that go with each holiday in my world. Right. And I look forward to those. So, you know, this past holiday, which was Easter, you know, the, one of the couple of the desserts were a coffee cake, which is made with cream cheese, and it's got nuts. I see your eyeballs open. <laughs> like, like, holy crap. You know, cream cheese, and there's nuts and cinnamon and tons of sugar, and this, and, you know, and, and the, it's all in the middle, and it's, mm. it's incredible. Right. Um, my sister makes a rigot pie, which is a ton of fat and sugars and things. Like that. But honestly, God, if you eat one bite, you want to eat the whole pie or the whole cake. So those are a couple things I look forward to. And I'm not, you know, I, I preach on our show, you know, that I'm not trying, I don't think, you know, sacrifice everything they enjoy. I think right. you need to find better options throughout your daily routine, but you have to also treat yourself. So I look forward to those. And knowing, you should. Yes. Right. Knowing I was going to cheat. Right. So what I did was I looked at the day. I said, I know I'm cheating. I'm, I know I'm going to maybe probably eat less than I would have three years ago because I'd ate the whole pie and the whole cake. Right. So I'm going to control what I eat. I'm going to satisfy my urge knowing that Monday, the day after, and by the way, my Sunday Easter did carry into my Monday right. breaking of my diet right. because I had a lot of leftover foods. My sister wanted to leave the whole extra rig up pie. I said, please take it. Right. She thought I was nuts. Right. I said, no, I will eat it. Right. My other sister left a piece of the coffee cake and, and my mom left Easter bread. Yeah. Monday I ate the coffee cake and Easter bread. Yeah. So I, and I was off Monday. So I kind of carried the overindulgence into two days, but I did have a game plan and a plan of attack to try and fight it as soon as I was done indulging. Right. You know, and I don't know what you, your plan of attack is from the nutrition side. I didn't really have one. I just kind of went back on to what I was doing and then tried to hit the gym. Like, I just tried to get back in my routine. Well, I think you, the whole idea is to have a plan of attack. And I think for anybody starting a program, once you get on it, if you do know you're going to go off it, say on a holiday, you need to prepare yourself days in advance and say, it's the dessert that I want, or it's the lasagna that I want. Say it's the whole day that you want to cheat. You've got to tell yourself a few days before that, what's my plan? I know I'm going to do it on that day, but when I wake up the next day, how am I going to do it? What do I need to do? How, wh what's going to prevent me from falling off the wagon again, like that happened to you? Most people cannot have a cheat day and then get up the next day and recover. They just can't do it. They usually fall off the wagon again on day two. Mm -hmm. So what like I, I did. Like you did. Because I think what happens is when you stay on a program for a long time and you don't eat those foods, when you reintroduce them, chemically your body does change. So you start craving them again. But it's almost like that old friend that you weren't supposed to hang out with because they're bad. I got a few of them too. Don't but worry. when you hang out with that friend again, you're having a great time mm -hmm. and it's hard to let go of that friend so you want to do it one more time. So what I try to tell people is take a few deep breaths, go into it, get up the next day and just say to yourself, I've done it, I've had it, it was great, but I gotta say goodbye like you do to your friend. Mm -hmm. And you gotta start your program off. You can't do these cleansing, you can't do starvation the next day. Um, those are just, it's not gonna work. You're probably gonna end up getting into the bread, into the lasagna. What I say is start on the program that you originally were on before you had the cheat day. But start slow. Wake up in the morning, get your mind together. If there's leftover pieces in the house, you either throw them down the disposal, not the garbage, because you'll dig it out of the garbage and you're going to eat it. <laughs> your disposal is your best friend. Or the night that you're pigging out, 
every person in that house gets a doggy bag. Yeah. Every single here, Aunt Joan, take the cake. You know, Sally. Like get, I did with the rigot pie. With I have, there is not one left over, not an egg, a chocolate covered egg, nothing that you could overindulge in. That is the biggest key. Second is just getting your mind together. You have to be able to just take your time, take a few deep breaths in the morning and say we're back on track. And that usually gets you started. Start with your regular eating regime. Other trick is you may want to up the fiber a little bit the next day because sometimes when you expand your stomach from eating mm -hmm. more than what you've normally ate, you're going to feel like crap. But the next day, try to up the fiber a little bit. Um, drink a lot more fluid the next day. Get rid of some of that excess water by drinking more water. Up the fiber, you're going to feel fuller the next day. Those are a few things. And warm. Drink warmer beverages throughout the day. That gives you that sensation of being fuller throughout the day. You know, it almost sounds like you need a remedy like if you over drank sure. the night before and sure. you know I, I'm thinking of that as you're talking because to be very honest with you if you went out and drank a lot the night before and you felt different the next day which you will right you are definitely paying attention because you don't have a choice to right. pay attention right I felt totally different the next sure. day and then when I carried it into a second day in my mind I'm thinking my god I could see how easy it would be to go back to just laying on the couch right. and eating all day and doing right. nothing and it was actually a struggle right. to because it is like you said it's an old friend waiting to welcome you and you know what and it's fun to just sure. do nothing right you know but at 47 years old my body after two days actually felt such a big difference I said if I don't go back immediately right. this could get very bad for me well, personally, I had a, an experience from years of bodybuilding. The first time I ever competed, it was, you know, 10 weeks of total restriction. And you planned what you were going to eat after the day of the show, which was chocolate chip cookies, lasagna, just things I normally would not have eaten, but I just went at it. The next day after that cheat day, I woke up and my skin was sore to the touch. Mm -hmm. My legs were sore, my face was sore. I had a reaction. My body had a chemical reaction to all the sugar that, you pounded that I had pounded that. in. So I, I, I don't know if it ever happened to anybody before, but that gave me a wide eye awakening and I just said you know what that to me was not worth it. I didn't, I did not, I physically, I thought something was wrong with me. So I never did that again. If I wanted a cheat day after I competed, it was a, I went at it in a much. You know what? That's it's funny you say that because I'm in food business and you know I come from the restaurant business and you know in the restaurant business there's food shows. Right. And my first food show and I, my my oldest son when he was about 13 I took him to his first food show and it's kind of like that same scenario. My first food show and I believe everybody's first food show. You walk in and you're surrounded by all these desserts and your smells are hitting you and the first thing you do is you attack. Yeah. Because it's your first show and you right. real and you start chomping but you go for all the sweets. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what's hitting you in that's the face. Right. And within 15 minutes, you're sick and literally sick. sick in your stomach. Right. I brought my son one out in Seven Springs. My Dougie, he's, 13, he was, he's 25 now, but he was 13 on his son. We go in, and I'm, I was already experienced, so I have, I'm nibbling a little bit here. And yeah. Little bit here. He comes in, and he just pounds everything. And about 15 minutes later, he comes out dead. I'm sick. I'm sick. Yeah. I'm sick. And it was like, so it's kind of the same thing. It's kind of the same thing. And I think it's a very unhealthy way to... Uh, uh, a, you know, if you want to have a cheat day, you've got to mentally prepare yourself, you've got to have a game plan before you do it, and you've got to have a way to get yourself back up in the next day and say, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it again. I had it. But you know what? Having a cheat day once a weekend, like on a Saturday, every Saturday, and allow yourself to maybe one Saturday have a dessert, the next Saturday have something salty and crunchy, the next Saturday have like a spaghetti dinner. If you allow yourself to do that, you're not going to set yourself up for a huge yeah. amount of food, a, a huge variety of food in one sitting. You just kind of spread it out over over the rest of your life. And you know what, I think mentally it would probably be a relief because you know that, hey, I can eat this, just not today. Right. I can eat it Saturday. I'm going to wait till Saturday yeah. and you I'm know. not going to feel sick and sore after I gorge it. But Sunday's coming. 
and that's going to be the day. You know what? I had it. It's not in the house. I ate what I had. It's gone. There's no remnants of it, and you just move on. Yeah, the holidays, they are tricky, you know. So from the nu nutrition side, make a game plan. Stick to the game plan. I mean, if here's the thing. The way I look at it is about three years eating pretty healthy. I think I'm strong enough to have weathered that storm of a one or two day. -er. Somebody who's not been as deep in, you maybe you don't take as big of a cheat day. You don't. Maybe you just nip at something like Jane's saying. Instead of ponding it all in one day or two days, maybe just give yourself a little bit of a treat, and that's what it is, is a treat. Right. And eventually your treats are going to look like, you know what, I don't even want that. I don't even want it anymore. it's going to make me sick when right. I eat it kind of thing. And sometimes, you know, I'll, people just starting out, to give up anything is a very hard thing to do. So what I tell people is, you know, stay on your program throughout the day, but allow yourself to have something that you want at the end of the day, a snack before you go to bed that's under 200 calories. And I don't care what it is, but you've got to make sure it's under 200 calories. It could be chocolate, it could be Doritos, I don't care what it is every day you can have that and you can tap yourself on the back at the end of the day and said I followed my program here's my reward and then after a few weeks of that you may not want that at mm -hmm. the end of the day but you're still gonna lose the weight you stayed within a caloric range throughout the day if as long as it's under what you need to lose weight and it's you're gonna be successful so in other words end of the day I want something crunchy or sweet or chocolate or this or that Weigh, count, if the Doritos say 200 calories or less, you can have 12 Doritos, then you Got count it. out 12 Doritos and, and you sit there and Doritos. enjoy them. And if but that's you don't what it takes. Like me, like my wife is perfect example. So, I mean, she's, we're, we're just getting to know each other. This is a long time ago. And she goes, I'm craving chips. I'm craving chips. You know, I don't know if I ever told you the story. She goes into the kitchen. She opens up a bag of chips. She pulls out a chip. She eats it. She rolls up the bag, puts it aside. I said, what are you doing? Yeah. She said, I'm done. I said, you had one chip. And, and I'm not exaggerating. One chip. She said, yeah, I'm good. I said, yeah. I said are you nuts? Yeah. I said, I didn't eat that. If I was craving something, I said, I would have ate that bag, <laughs> got in my car, drove to the store for another bag, and probably ate that bag if I was craving something. Yeah. So it is down to... If if you're a person like me, it is real, really hard discipline right. to count 12 chips out right. and eat those chips. Yeah. But I, unless I want to be a 400 pound fat guy, right. I have to have the discipline to count those 12 chips out. Yeah. And, eat and, chips. and I think, you know, with the culture that we live in, I mean, I think we're just used to the shovel and the shovel. If you can really sit down and appreciate food, drink, everything that you do and take it and see what it is, lay it out in front of you, enjoy each bite of it, chew it, taste it, swallow it. I mean, we don't do these see, things here. We stand and Look, eat. Me and Jennifer, when I first met her again, okay, because I'm a hog. I go to a movie, if I'm eating M&M's, I hog. Yeah. If I'm eating grapes, I hog. Yeah. You know, so I eat, I get licorice and I eat them like a hog. Yeah. So we first meet and she, she's controlling the licorice now. She don't eat them, but she's controlling them. She's handing me one licorice. One licorice. That's what you're supposed one to do. One licorice. And I'm yeah. the first couple, I was okay. Before I'm going, you know what? Now I'm going faster. Yeah. I'm faster. And she's not handing them as fast as I want them now. So yeah. now I'm going, hey, wait a minute. Give me my bag of freaking licorice. Yeah. But that's what you can't do that. You can't you, you do that. You have to be in control. Yeah. That's the hardest part for people like me. Yeah, I, I taught my daughter at, at the age of nine, when she was nine, she loved goldfish crackers. And she was hammering them. And we turned it over, we read the label, she noticed you could get 33 crackers in one serving. So we laid all the little fish out on the table like they were swimming, 33 of them, and she started eating. She got to 18 and she didn't want any more. Mm -hmm. Once you figure out what's in a serving, take each one, eat it, you may not even want to eat yeah. the entire serving. It's just the shop. Well, you're actually giving your body a chance, uh, the food, a chance to hit your stomach. And taste it, yeah. right. And you, 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 you will eventually, you don't need that taste anymore. Mm -hmm. Hershey Kiss um, was the best thing that I think was ever invented. Because if you want a chocolate, and you just want one taste of it. A little Hershey Kiss is a substantial piece of chocolate. Mm -hmm. There's only 18 calories in one of those. I Don't tell people, tell suck that. on it. <laughs> suck on it. <laughs> that means I can have suck 10 on of them. It. <laughs> Stick it in your mouth. Don't chew it. Suck it. 
and just sock on it till it's gone and then you're totally done with it. Yeah. You've got your chocolate. And, and a lot of it is I'm craving in my mouth. Your body's not craving it, your, your mouth is craving yeah. it. That's right. You know. yeah. So, okay, we're covering the nutrition side and how to recover. And do we want to talk to Joe a little bit? Sure, about we'll bring some Joe in. And the training side. And what do you think, Joe? I, I think you did a great job. <laughs> well, I want to touch on one point, though. A big misconception people have with eating is saving all of their meals, saving all of their calories for the later meals of the day. Uh -huh. Fill the voids. A lot of people consider their coffee their breakfast. Mm -hmm. Then they eat a lunch at noon. Uh, then they eat a big dinner. So they think, ah, oh, I'm not eating as much in a day. Uh, guilty cameraman right there. JD. <laughs> uh, but, but that's a, a thing too. Spread your meals out. Eat a breakfast. You want, coffee doesn't count as a meal. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, have some, if you're going to have, have a, a piece of uh, wheat toast with, with uh, some kind of healthy light peanut butter on it. Uh, at least you're getting some calories in your body. And then if, you're, if your body feels that it's getting, it doesn't go into a starvation mode because of you wake up at 6 in the morning, you don't eat until noon, that's six hours that have gone by, yeah. your body begins to it's hold anything itself. that it it consumes mm -hmm. because it's not getting the nutrition throughout the day. It's getting uh, a lunch and then it's getting a huge dinner. Then we go to bed, then we start the cycle all over again. Right. So spreading the calories out, filling the voids of uh, meals throughout the day, eating every few hours. That doesn't mean you're eating a three or four course meal, mm -hmm. but you're going to eat a couple things. A light meal, at least your body out of that starvation mode and it's getting some nourishment and then you can wait another few hours and eat. Great. Would it be wise if you, like a dinner, if you had four different increments to your dinner plate, okay, would it be wise to take, break down those four increments and spread those out sure. for the day? Sure, without a sure. doubt. So you're yeah. getting the same yeah. amount of food, you're yeah. just saying, okay, instead of eating my asparagus, my mashed potatoes, my steak, and, and something else, or, and my piece of bread, that's, that's, spread, like eat the asparagus that's at a great this time, idea. the mashed potatoes. That's why a, a food pyramid is good in a way, as long as you don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. You know, get a little bit of your nuts, and your grains, and your, your greens, and things throughout the day, and all of your meals, and by the end, you have the whole puzzle put together. Well, um, his his wife, Jen, that was just a classic was example. She, was, she came yeah. to me and said, my entire life I grew up, we didn't eat breakfast, we didn't eat lunch, we ate dinner. Now how old's your wife? She's young. 35. But for her whole life of doing that, I said, you still look good, but... Uh, so what I don't didn't want to do to upset her it, the way she is right now, I don't want to throw a bunch of calories at her and say, you've got to eat breakfast. I said, what, what is the meal that you eat? Dinner. What do you have for dinner? I have a meat, I have a starch, I have a vegetable and a salad. And I said, I want you to take that exact meal and you're going to take it apart. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have your, if you could, if you can do it, not you can, a salad for breakfast or mm -hmm. the potatoes or the meat and just take that meal and spread it out. Throughout the day. Start yeah. getting her used to having meals throughout the day. Then we can add more calories right, in, right, but just right. to get her body regulated. Right. Yeah. But it's, it, it, that's simple changes. Simple. simple things that people can do is they make a conscious effort and they realize, hey, my coffee isn't a breakfast. I gotta have a little something else there. Like yogurt, something, just to fill that void. It yes. makes a big difference. Yeah. Body gets a routine of eating. It's secure that more food's coming, more nourishment. And your metabolism. It, the metabolism. It changes your metabolism. It right. kicks up your metabolism. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was under the understanding as your body kind of has a brain of its own to where if it knows you're feeding it on a regular basis, it will retain less of what you're putting in because it knows it has more it, coming. It does right. have a mind of its own. It's a survival thing. It's, it's almost it, like it a... It adapts um, and, it, and it, it's, its job is to... We're an organism that wants to stay alive. Mm -hmm. We adapt to different environments through, through, through time. Um, so it's going to do whatever it, it, it can to, to survive mm -hmm. the environment. Uh, if, you, if you know <coughs> diabetics, if you become a diabetic, they have to eat on a regular time schedule mm -hmm. because of their problem. When you tell somebody to get on a program, what I try to tell them to do is eat at the exact same time every day. And it sets you up to almost being like a diabetic in a good way. Because what it does is, if you eat at 6 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 
in nine o'clock every day before each meal a half hour before you're gonna be shaking you're gonna want that food that's, that's what you want you want to be able to be hungry for that each for each mm -hmm. of those that means your metabolism is working that means you, everything that is supposed to be the way it's using that food efficiently is working so diabetics if they don't have that meal before their sugar drops they get shaky they get and it's almost like that when you start somebody on a very regimented program if they don't eat and it's happened to me like I if I don't eat at a certain time I get shaky if I don't I eat. get very shaky but I that's a good too, thing and me too so but right. you've trained your body and you're healthier for being that way it's the people who say when I wake up I'm not hungry I don't need lunch. I only need, you know, that's when you, there's definitely an issue going on. If you're not hungry, you've, there's something going on. And the other thing that I recommend is, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I think I am. I, I give advice like I am. If there truly is something that you can't change through diet and exercise, you have to go get your blood work done and go see somebody who's going to take a look from the inside. It's easy to look at somebody from the outside and say, okay, you're too fat, you're too this, you're too that. But when you do everything you can and it's not working, you've got to take it a next step. It could be step. something bigger it than what you it, can Definitely. Control. So we can give the best advice that we can as trainers mm -hmm. and give the suggestions. But when it comes down to it, the only way you're going to really find out is through your blood. Um, and you know, you've got to do that through a doctor. So. Okay, so we work on the nutrition coming out of a holiday. What, as far as training goes coming out of a holiday, would you recommend, Joe, now I take two days at Easter and the next day and I overeat and I definitely felt the difference in my body as far as being sluggish. I could feel the difference of food making a difference in how I felt, not just about myself, but wanting to go do anything. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend physically and, and training wise coming out of a holiday or, or a, a, even a, a week vacation? You, you take a week vacation, I'm, like when I go on vacation, I train and I eat right because that's what I actually love. When most people go on vacation, they do the opposite. They drink and they eat and they this and they that. Everything wrong because they're they're treating themselves. How do you come out of well, a vacation or a holiday? Well, when you're on the vacation, you want to try to stay in a little bit of a routine. If you're not working out, you don't have to go to a gym to stay in your routine. When I go on vacation, that's when I stay away from the gym. I'm in a gym 15 hours mm -hmm. a day, but I still get out and walk. It's a different envir environment for me. I'm in the in the ocean. I'm in the pool. I'm walking on the beach uh, three active. or four times a day. I'm very active, just in a different way. So don't just be a slug. If you're going to eat, you got to stay in your routine a little bit. Get out and take some walks when you're gone. Um, the, the the whole key is getting in a routine and staying in a routine. Mm -hmm. You have to. I think human beings. But let's say let's say, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but let's say my wife and I go away and. Other than the workout part, let's say we didn't work out and we were away. We love to do nothing but lay by the pool right. and do nothing. Right. Because our day, just like you're in a gym all day, our day is nothing but appointments, right. running around, so we don't want to do nothing. Right. So now we let's say we take the workout out of the, the thing and we lay around all day. Now she drinks, I don't, but I eat and she doesn't. Right. So we so both go overboard on what our vices are right. and our week vacation is up and we're coming back in. Right. Do you go right back and bang it or do you uh, take that first week light and uh, well, back in, I mean, re-entry is, is, is a tough thing for a lot of people. They like, they're in a groove, they're on vacation, it's a groove, seven to ten days. You got to get right back into it. You can't wait and think about it and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and uh, contemplate, oh, I got to get or you won't get back. So you have to just jump right back in into your workout. A week off is good. It's mm -hmm. good for your joints. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from the from the heavy heavy workout end of it. But yeah, you want to start light and work your way back mm -hmm. into it. After a week, you're back in the routine. Then you can pick up where you left off. But I don't like people to get too, and myself too. I don't want to come back and be become too sore right yeah. away because that's what's going to happen if I try to jump in right where I left off. So it's a nice easy workout. I might cut the time of my workout down. I might um, increase the, the, the rest periods in between my sets um, or I might not do the same volume of work that I'm, I normally do. So there's a couple different ways to, to monitor that. Um, so, so you would recommend uh, eat, uh, taking uh, that first yeah. at least set of workouts or yeah. a week of workouts hey, to kind of ease least back you're, into it. At least you're back in the groove. Yeah. You're back in the game. Okay, if I don't go into the gym, you're gonna feel mentally horrible. it's going to play on you too. Right. I see it 
uh, every week of my life, I see it with people. I have people sign up for our classes. They come in and hit it hard. I mean, they're in here five days straight for two weeks, and I never see them again. Mm -hmm. That's 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 human nature. People see the magazines. I want to be that person in the magazine. They join a gym, sign up for a year. After a month, they're gone. This is too hard, you know. They hit it hard, and then they burn out, or they don't see the result that they thought they were going to see in that in that short period of time. Mm -hmm. Reality is, this is a lifestyle. It. It, it doesn't end until the day you die. And the whole reason we're doing it is to live longer, to live longer I think, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Or, or, or be healthier while you're alive. Or be healthier, your quality of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've got, you've got to find a routine, jump back into your routine, and then build up month after month after month. Have little goals. I think that's something that people need are little stepping stone, little goals um, to keep them going, mm -hmm. to keep them interested in what they do. Whether it's a, a, a pant size or um, it's, it's a, a, a muscle on their body that they want to bring up um, or they have a competition that they want to get into, whether it's a fitness or physique show or it's uh, you know running a 3K or a 5K. I don't, I'm not a marathon guy, so I'm mm -hmm. not going <laughs> to go terminology. there. Right. <laughs> but um, just find a goal. Find something that's going to keep you in the game. And once you achieve that goal, you got to find another goal, something to keep you going. Uh, people, people need those little little carrots in front of them as stepping stones to keep yeah. to keep going in this thing. Um, and I like to try to get people to the point where they feel guilty if they miss their workout. If 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 my clients are guilty because they missed a the workout then I've done my job. Mm -hmm. They're guilty. They feel bad. Yeah. You know, they'll call, oh, I had this and that and that, and, you know, but I, you know, that's, that's what I want. I want a little bit of guilt. I'm coming back though. So. See, another thing too, like we just did our health up transformation and mm -hmm. um, you know, we did great with it. I had one woman, we did our 60 day picture and she missed the 30 and she yeah. hasn't been working out. Yeah. So she was, as I pulled up, me and my wife and kids pulled up, she was already there. She gets out of her car, she goes, I feel like I'm going to the principal's office. She felt guilty mm -hmm. yeah. because she knew she slacked yeah. and she knew that her photos are getting taken and you're doing this and you're doing that and you, you let yourself, you didn't let me down, yeah. but you did a commit to something and you mm -hmm. let yourself down. Yes. So, I mean, basically, make like Joe's saying, make a commitment, make a goal. A goal is a commitment. And, and your goal may be just feeling better. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you might have a bum shoulder. Tim is a, is a client of mine who's been with me for 12, 13 years over here. He came to me. Come on, he Tim. Was, he was down on all fours. His shoulder bothered him. Um, he, he, we still have tweaks here and there. It's, it's, it's constant maintenance. But the guy's walking upright. The guy's out there helping me split wood and, and not little things of wood. We were, we, were, we were splitting three, four foot logs out there, 150 pounds a piece. And, and that's because of his lifestyle And he's not change. a spring chicken. He, he acts like it, but he's not. So yeah, but he's it's, hot it's and he's handsome. And he, keeps, and he keeps coming back. Come on, Tim. Show back. that body off. Yeah. Come on. Well, the thing is, it, it, like you said originally, <laughs> it's a lifestyle change. It is. It's, it is. It's till you die or you're, you're going to try and be as healthy as you can until the day you die or you're not. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. I, I talked on my last show that, you know, the other day and I said, if you had two people and they were one was completely out of shape and this one was completely in shape and they both had a heart attack and died at the age of 50. Everybody look and say, see, he died the same time as him, he didn't do anything, and or he worked his ass off, he didn't do shit, and he, he did live the same life. But, what quality of life did they have in those 50 years? Right. Right. This guy never moved off the couch and yeah. shoveled pizzas in his face while he watched TV every <laughs> right. day. And this guy was up climbing mountains and riding bikes and, and enjoying, and not even to mention your own satisfaction, but your children. Right. You can't even get off the couch to take your kid somewhere or to go play ball in the yard with your yeah. kid. Right. The other guy's swinging off f fences and running through tunnels with his kids. Right. So even your kids have a better quality of life right. if you're a healthier par parent. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that's what I talk about. That's why for me, getting healthy isn't about making me live longer. Because to be honest with you, 
I don't really want to live longer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just want to live healthy. Right. You know what I mean? I never thought I'd make 30. I'm yeah. 47. I'm yeah. 17 years past what I thought I'd live. Yeah. So now, the fact when I was young, I was healthy. Now that I'm 47, and I might live 20 more years, I don't want to live an unhealthy 20 more years. Right. right. So it is a conscious decision every day. Sure. It is. Without it a really doubt. It really is. Yep. So, bottom line is get in a routine, find goals, um, make better choices, and uh, and and your quality of life will probably be better. Okay. Well, I mean, Jane. I mean, thank you for having me sure. on your your show, Joe. I appreciate you guys letting us do some things up at Mac Fitness. Absolutely. We're, you yeah. know, up there in Wexford, PA. In. I mean, these guys are incredible as far as training people, educating you. It isn't just about getting a workout, and it's about learning what you're doing and why you're doing it. And these guys are great for that. So, you know, I mean, on behalf of us three, thank you very much, and you know, we'll see you on the next episode.